My name is Pastor Neil, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. The sermon I have for you today is called Make a Choice. You see, Christianity is about making a choice. Do I choose to do things God's way or mine? Do I choose to follow His wishes or the wishes of others who disagree with Him? The Bible repeatedly tells, make a choice. There is a story of a good old boy who came down out of the mountains one day. He was all dressed up and carrying his Bible. A friend saw him and asked, Elias, what's going on? Where are you going all dressed up like that, Elias? Oh, I've been hearing about New Orleans. I hear that there's a lot of free running liquor and a lot of gambling and a lot of real naughty shows. The friend looked at him over and said, but Elias... Why are you carrying your Bible under your arm? Elias answered, Well, if, at, if it's good as they say it is, I might as well stay over until Sunday. Now, obviously that's a joke. No one would really do something like that, would they? Well, they would. There are people who live on what they call church, and then they live entirely differently throughout the rest of the week. They do things throughout the week that they wouldn't dream of doing in, in a church building. Uh, they've bought into this strange theology. They don't mind being religious, but not too religious. It's all quite the same. Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. What does this mean? It means Paul made a choice between Jesus and something else. And Jesus won. That also means we have a choice. A choice to please Jesus or a choice to please the world. John said it this way in 1 John 2 verse 15. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If, you, if anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. So make a choice. The thing about making a choice is that sometimes we choose for one thing, but that means we would have to choose against something else. And, it's, and again, in Matthew 6, verse 24, No one can serve two masters, either you will hate, the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Now the issue here in Galatians is there was a theological conflict at the churches in Galatia, and they were pretty much uncircumcised Gentiles, and there was this, uh, there was this bunch of uncircumcised uncircumc Jews who tried to tell them that they weren't Christian unless the Gentiles believed and got circumcised. In other words, they had to become Jews before they can become Christians. Now, the problem was God had already said no to circumcision and it was not required anymore. Gentiles who believe, repented, confessed, and accepted Jesus and were baptized, they no longer had to go through that process. It tells us in Galatians chapter 3, 27 to 28, for as many as you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So my question for you is, who do you choose? Who do you choose? Do you choose to follow God or do you choose to follow the ways of the world? So Paul was saying you must make a choice. You can choose God's way of being saved or you can listen to someone else's way. You see, we have to be aware that when making these choices, we live in a world where there'll be others who will try to persuade us to follow what is wrong. Satan, Lucifer, he will try to persuade us to follow him. There have been in the past many false teachings and many false doctrines out there. But I tell you right now, in order to follow God truly, we must follow His Word, the Bible. You see, some may argue and some may say, well, isn't being 
good enough? Well, let me tell you right now, it's not. It's not just enough to be good. It may make you feel better, and don't get me wrong, there is a place to do good things. But when it comes to relationship with Jesus Christ, you have to wholeheartedly follow Him. You see, by having that mentality of just being good, it's as if we're trying to say, well, if I do good here, good there, good there, and if I do good deeds here, it will get me into heaven. But I'm here to tell you that, no, we have to make a choice to follow Jesus Christ. And when we follow Jesus Christ, we want to do good, not because we want to gain something. So yes, in a sense, being good is not good enough. There's an author uh, by the name of Bloomberg, and he says this, God couldn't keep him out if he wanted. Bloomberg deserved to go to heaven. But his thought was, because I did all these good things, I deserve to go to heaven. That was Bloomberg's thought. But we know now that no, we have to make a choice to follow Jesus. And through that choice of following Jesus, we want to do good to others. It is not a merit of collecting and saying, oh, look, these as, well, this is what I've done. You see, when it becomes uh, to being a follower of Jesus, God already extended His grace towards us through His Son, Jesus Christ. One of the most important things when we make a choice, we need to repent and ask to be converted and to turn away from the sins of the past. We want to start new. You know, when we accept Jesus Christ wholeheartedly in our life, the choice will be made easier. Now, some of you may wonder, well, Pastor Neil, does that mean that when I accept Jesus Christ, everything will be perfect, everything will be fine? I'm here to tell you, no, it's not. There will still be struggles, but by having Jesus Christ right by your side, He will help you. He will give you the strength to get through those tough days. He will give you the strength to be able to come home and face the challenges that you may have at home or face the challenges you may have at work. But this is the amazing thing about making a choice. When you have Jesus Christ, He's there with open arms saying, I am here for you. Cast your burdens on me. You know, there's an illustration I want to share that when it comes to our burdens, sometimes we hold it like a box and we want to carry it. And sometimes we go, okay, God, I'm ready to give my burdens to you. And we're about to give it to God. And then we take it back and say, no, God, I can handle the burdens in this box. Let me carry it longer. So we carry it longer. Sooner or later, again, we feel the weight of the burdens in that box. So then we want to go to God and say, okay, God, here is my burdens. And as we are about to give it to God, we go, nope, I can still bear it. I can still handle it. So we go throughout the week, the months, the years, then finally it gets too heavy. The boxes of burdens has now doubled. And so now we finally... Ask the Lord, please, Lord, get this burden out of here. Take it. And so we hand it to Him. And God tells you, I love you. I've been waiting for you. Why did it take so long to, for you to give your burdens to me? But you know, as a reward, you know what God gives in return after you've given in His burdens and you've chosen Him? He gives you a gift of blessing. Your body is lifted from all the weight of the burdens, but yet He gives you a gift of blessing, a gift of hope, a gift of renewed strength. See, that's what happens when we make a choice to follow God. He promises that He will be by our side no matter what. We have to go to Him. We have to trust Him. We have to trust in His Son, Jesus. But at of course, we need to make a choice. Now, as I conclude, I want to encourage you today, if you have not made a choice, make a choice now. Choose Jesus Christ to be in your life. 
Don't allow the burdens of the world to weigh you down. Make the choice and He will lift your burdens. Make the choice and He will provide protection, renewed strength. He will be there even in your toughest times. When you make a choice with Jesus, you make a choice of eternity, of that promise that when He returns, he, you will be with Him in heaven. So make a choice. Choose Jesus and you will see how your life will be changed. And it will be changed for the good, for the best. Thank you and God bless.